Whatever happened to that uh one dude? Uh what was his name? Ah, uh, so if you guys remember, uh, so this is one dude named uh, what was it called? Ian, Ian Anthony, what's it called? Ian Anthony. Uh, did he make it? Yeah, Smosh. I remember now, Smosh. The only thing I remember is just the Smosh the movie. Uh, I heard that they made a how do you call? They they split apart for some for some like reason why, and I heard like the channels coming like a little bit downhill. Uh. Dude, I used to watch uh, Smosh just to watch the, you know, the old Pokemon videos, the Pokemon comedy skits. I still remember the "Shut up." <laughs> I still remember that "Shut up." All right, hold on. Uh, okay, so big shout out to Sunny V2. Okay, how Smosh killed their channel. Okay, dude. Ah, oh, dude. I remember every time I come back home. Uh. <laughs> I used to turn on how do you call it? Just uh just how do you call it? Not turn on, but pretty much turn on the the PC, you know what I'm saying? That old uh computer I had. And just watch Smosh. That's pretty much like I used to watch the Pokemon one. You know what I'm talking about? The one that says the I think yeah, I still watch all the parts. So it's, the thing I like about it is just the the intro. You hear just the Shut up! You hear that? Shut up! Alright, so I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, exactly. I'm just gonna shut up and play this uh, video from Sunny V2. Go check him out. All right. On the 17th of May 2006, just 153 days after YouTube was launched for the very first time, a bizarre channel by the name of Smosh will become the platform's most subscribed page with a whopping 2,000. That's actually a good name for a channel, Smosh. I ain't gonna lie. 1,986 subscribers, more than double second place who had just 1,469. This would foreshadow what would become an incredibly successful career for two Californian friends who had created this strange comedy channel. They would eventually release a full-length feature film, regain and hold the title of YouTube's most subscribed channel for 215 days in 2013, and by 2014, Smosh was safely and consistently gaining approximately 100 million views per month, which would last for a period of over five years. However, uh, we say five years specifically because in early wow, they 2019, look different. something started to go wrong on each and every Smosh channel. Looks different their unshakable now. viewership fortress began to crumble. Their reliable 100 million monthly views became 75 million, then 50 million, then recently just 15 million. On Smosh Pit, Smosh Games, and even their Spanish dubbed Smosh channel, it's the same story. 41 million has become 13 million, 18 million has become 7 million, 11 million has become less than 2 million, the decline of each all beginning at the exact same point in time, mid-2019. When Smosh uploaded their first video over 16 years Mortal ago, they could have Kombat. never predicted ding, their insane ding, level ding, of ding, success. Ding, However, ding, if ding, Smosh ding. is unable to turn their current viewership decline around, it will make for somewhat of a depressing end to a channel that's been YouTube's most subscribed on three separate occasions. The first time we already mentioned, it was mid-2006, and the title was claimed with literally less than 3,000 subscribers. It came about after two high school friends by the name of Ian and Anthony began uploading bizarre lip-syncing videos to the platform, the first of which being uploaded on the 19th of November 2005, 26 days before the website was even officially launched and was rather still in beta testing mode. In their very first video, the watermark in the bottom left hand corner showed that the goal of the videos was to promote their website, smosh.com, which had been running since 2002. It started as a website that I made for me and my friends wow, to okay. hang out and talk to each other after school. Smosh became a YouTube channel where Ian and I made videos together just because we liked to make each other laugh. Although the goal was to simply make each other laugh, they quickly realized that these videos also made their audience laugh. And with comedy in mind, the videos would shift to well thought out sketches, creating satire out of relatable life situations, such as how not to make a first impression. After losing the position of YouTube's most subscribed channel in 2006, through these new sketch comedy videos, they would regain the title in April of 2007, this time boasting a much more impressive count of over 100,000 subscribers. Subscribers, at which point they would also hire their first staff member with the goal of growing the channel further, an impressive feat for a YouTube channel in 2008. The videos continued to improve. However, their subscriber count would be overtaken by Nigahiga, then Fred, who would become the first ever YouTuber to reach 1 million oh, subscribers. God. Yeah, Although, <laughs> I was going to say, isn't Fred the first person who got uh, 1 million subscribers? Fred, Smosh was still growing, eventually coming in closely behind as the third channel ever to reach 1 million subs. Hey guys, we just want to make a short little video to thank everyone who subscribed to us. 
One million subscribers is a huge milestone. Smosh were without a doubt on the cutting edge of YouTube in the early 2010s. Their thumbnails, titles, ability to retain an audience through plots where you wouldn't get the joke unless you watched the entire video. At the time, there were simply very few other creators who had the same level of knowledge and skill. Subsequently, after losing the title of YouTube's most subscribed channel to Fred, they'd begin to battle for it once again. They'd re-overtake Fred in early 2011, then Shane Dawson in late 2011, Nigga Higa in late 2012, leaving Ray William Johnson as the only creator with more subscribers than Smosh. However, of course, with double the manpower and a superior video style, Smosh would become the first channel in YouTube history to hit 10 million subscribers, and, and for the third time become YouTube's most subscribed channel on the 12th of January 2013, six and a half years after they had first achieved the title back in May of 2006. Throughout 2014, 2015, and 2016, 100 million views in a month had become business as usual. One of the main reasons for this was that Smosh had been acquired by a company known as Alloy Digital, which, as outlined by an artist, article written by Deadline resulted in a 40% increase in viewership. Alongside this would come numerous new Smosh channels, such as Smosh Games, which was experiencing its own similar blow up alongside the main channel. Smosh would release a full length feature film yeah. in 2015. By 2017, the team had grown once again, adding five new members to the main video cast, all of which completed under the management of Alloy Digital, which had since been renamed to Defy Media. But while Defy Media was adding substantial benefit to Smosh as a channel, it was doing so at the cost of Anthony's creative freedom. He wanted to execute on his own ideas, but stated that everything needed to be put through a company filter. It was someone else's decision as to whether or not his ideas eventually made it onto Smosh's YouTube channel. For this reason, Anthony would announce that he would be leaving Smosh, which apparently had been Aww. in planning for some time, as the president of Defy Media stated that the company has been preparing for Padilla's departure for several months and has worked to diversify its programming and cast for even longer. Anthony would announce the departure in a video on his personal channel titled Why I Left Smosh, explaining in his own words the reason for his resignation. I've been holding on to these memories and hoping that someday Smosh would be like how it was when we first started. Before Smosh was a brand owned by a company, Smosh being part of a company has put all of my creative decisions through a filter of what's appropriate for the Smosh brand as deemed by the company. This video was uploaded alongside a main channel video titled Anthony is Leaving Smosh, in which they explained that his leaving was not a result of them having a fight or anything along those lines. I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna assume he's leaving because we got some sort of big fight or because we hate each other, no. uh, but I can guarantee you guys as nothing to do with that. Now you might think that losing Anthony was the beginning of the end for Smosh, the reason the channel began to crumble. However, the data actually showed the opposite. The channel was averaging around 60 million views a month at the time of Anthony's departure, yet would rise back up pretty consistently to an average of around 100 million per month a year later. This showed that the success of the channel was perhaps less reliant on the hosts themselves, but rather the content, the team, and specifically the management. However, this would also mean that the success of the channel was to some degree out of the control of Smosh's remaining front man, Ian, which would become an issue when the parent company, Defy Media, randomly shut down overnight. So our parent mm. company uh, went out of business mm -hmm. and Smosh is currently without a home. With the company now defunct, former member Anthony went to town in a personal channel video discussing the ways in which Defy Media had screwed him over. I've had so much to say about Defy Media for a very long time, but now that Defy Media isn't a thing anymore, I just have to say everything that I'm feeling. I've been hiding it publicly for so long. He stated that when Defy Media bought Smosh back in 2011, they paid him in stock, which was completely useless unless the company went public, which it never did. So I sold it for zero dollars. Selling for stock means that it's completely valueless unless that company goes public which it never did. Additionally, after selling Smosh to Defy Media, Anthony was simply a salaried employee, stating that yeah, he never saw any him over. Of the big money that Smosh had been pulling in. We were given salaries at this, at this company, which was great. Super happy with that. But that company was drawing in millions of dollars every year. And I was seeing a fraction of that. I have no idea where all that money went that the company was making. In the first episode of the Smosh Car Show, Shane and Ian mentioned that Defy Media was clearly in strife leading up to the shutdown. Every couple months, there'd be just massive layoffs yeah. and like 30 people would lose their job and we'd all be like, oh my God, yeah. this sucks. Mm -hmm. We'd Our budget kept getting cut and cut until we were like, were shooting sketches with nothing. Two months after Defy Media had become defunct, the channel would have one of their best months ever with 139 million monthly views, received from content that had been lined up and filmed while everything at Defy was still going well. We got videos that we have already shot on Smosh. We have videos we've already shot on 
Smosh Pit. A lot of And we have videos that we've already shot on Smosh Gam. However, this level of viewership will become the channel's high watermark, as after this stellar 139 million view month in January 2019, the channel's viewership began to decline quite consistently. There are some pretty obvious substantial public changes over the last two years, which hint at the reason behind why things have begun to go south after 13 years of seemingly unstoppable growth. In Feb- Hold on. I did not know that. I, I like. I thought. How do you call? I thought the reason why like they split up, is just because like you know how like the same situation with Guava Juice and also that one guy named uh, Alex. Yeah, Alex Wasabi. I thought the reason why they like split up. Oh, just because like I thought it'll be the same thing for Smosh. Like, oh, you know, I just want to like you know separate because oh, I just want to make my own channel. I'm in my own path, stuff like that. Which is understandable, but like I thought it'll be the same thing for Smosh. I thought it was gonna be nothing like this. Okay. So, it's crazy, okay. Alright. Hey, look. It's, uh, how do you call it? What's his name? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> Red and Link followed the channel's decline. Smosh was bought by Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning. In the video announcing the acquisition by Mythical Entertainment, they'd mentioned that Smosh now had the ability to do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. We get to do whatever we want, and we're super, super excited. This was clarified in the Smosh cast. They meant that they were pretty much an independent company, only with a little oversight from Rhett and Link. This is as close to being our own company yep. as it could possibly get, but it's like safer and like, like Rhett and Link's people are like giving advice and trying to help us like, hey, this is some ideas and like be better, but like you don't have to do this yeah. if you don't want. The three members seem to think that having their own creative freedom and control of the channel was gonna be a massive advantage. The reality now is that it, it's kind of just us doing our yeah. thing. Rhett and Link were like, here's this studio we have. Uh, yeah do whatever you want. In the process crapping on Defy Media, saying how bad they were, saying that they didn't know how to have fun, and saying that they were bad at comedy. Defy <laughs> was the principal that would come in every now and then be like, stop having fun, you gotta do this, whatever. And yeah. we were like, okay. Um, and it was tough because they didn't have a sense of humor. No. They didn't understand it was comedy. Yet the data <sighs> They're boomers, that's all I have to say. It's hard to see a boomer with a sense of humor seems to indicate that while with Defy Media, the channel had consistently high views, and it was only when Smosh did have the ability to go out on their own that things began to decline. Just because Smosh didn't like the management and leadership when they were with Defy Media didn't necessarily mean that Defy weren't knowledgeable on the topic of retaining an audience. In fact, if there was a lot of adversity, it probably meant that Defy Media and the Smosh team had extremely differing opinions on what should and shouldn't have been posted, where Defy Media might have actually been the correct one the whole time. The universe seems to work in a bizarre way where being caught in a terrible scenario with crappy insufferable management might actually be the dose of short-term uncomfortability that without you even realizing gives you the motivation to create something great. Perhaps it was Smosh's never-ending wrestling match with Defy Media that was actually giving them a reason to continue on with the project day after day. Maybe Smosh were trying to come up with the best ideas for no other reason than to spite Defy Media to prove them wrong as petty as it sounds which unbeknownst to them at the time might have actually been keeping the channel's viewership up. We banded together and we were always trying mm -hmm. to make great stuff and we were always having fun and doing crazy crazy shit. and we all had this kind of common enemy the yeah. whole time. We were kind of yeah. like, uh, these corporate overlords that are always- It felt like an 80s movie. Boundless freedom with the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, isn't always necessarily a good thing. Freedom is comfortable because there's no adversity, but when there's no adversity, there's no growth. Ian mentioned in that same podcast that while with Defy Media, they had substantially more resources. I gotta give them credit. Like we were able to do a lot of stuff and we were able to use a lot of resources Yeah, we had good resources, yeah. yeah. Ian didn't define exactly what he meant by resources. Perhaps he meant a bigger budget to create sets, paying for props, and most importantly, paying for the large team which assisted in making the videos. In a video titled The Truth About Smosh posted back in 2017, when everything was going well on the channel, Ian introduces the entire Smosh team consisting of 39 different people. A team that large was certainly going to cost a lot of money, and based purely on speculation, perhaps after leaving Defy Media, they no longer had the budget to keep everyone on board. Alternatively, perhaps after the closure of Defy had been announced, some of Smosh's team may have been proactive in finding new employment before Smosh was acquired by Rhett and Link. A third theory could be that since experiencing a decline in viewership, such a large team may now be financially unfeasible. It's hard to tell exactly how Smosh makes their money, and they have loads of different channels each bringing in different amounts of revenue, but if we focus for two seconds on the main channel, I can't imagine it being the type of content that's bringing in massive dollars. Many of the videos over the last month have been shorts which don't bring in any money, and the skits which are around four to five minutes long each probably aren't raking it in either. Across the rest of their channel, 
channels, they're gaining a combined total of around 20 to 30 million views a month, which in combination with their other methods for earning an income hmm. may no longer be enough to support a team of 39 staff. This is still just speculation, obviously, but the reason we've focused so heavily on speculation is because there are barely any obvious indicators in the case of Smosh, as there often are with other creators. Their viewership is down by 85%, but the video quality isn't oh, down by 85%. Yikes. In fact, the videos are no worse comparative to two years ago when the channel was gaining 100 million views a month. But maybe this is the problem, a lack of change in innovation. Their Every Blank Ever series is still a staple of their channel after over six years and comprises about a quarter of the channel's uploads, yet it oh, gains substantial Jesus less Christ. views than it used to because people are probably just getting bored of the same old format. Another minor thing is that the videos have adopted a slight political bias over the years with the occasional judgmental self-righteous comment about what is and isn't appropriate to say. And using an example of, say, BuzzFeed, the most hated brand in existence who's been experiencing massive layoffs over the last couple of years, wedging a subtle political agenda into videos that people watch for comedy is a disaster waiting to happen. The most interesting thing in the overall decline of Smosh is that the channel's viewership is only slightly higher than former member Anthony Padilla's personal channel, which is likely run with the help of a substantially smaller team. Maybe there are just too many moving parts at Smosh, too many differing opinions, and too many creative minds to concede on the direction in which the project needs to innovate and change. I have big brain now. That all that knowledge was squeezed inside of a box. Put it on my head. It'll explode right now. Oh, I swear. Sunny V2, he, so he does all the research. Oh, shout out to that guy. I really love his videos. Yes. Subscribe to Zuzah.